Hey everybody, it's Andy back in the Maker Lab at Micro Center, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at what I feel is one of the most underrated tools in 3D printing. Stay tuned. As we've mentioned in previous videos, 3D printing has come a long way in the past 10 years, especially when it comes to the ease of use for the hobbyist or the consumer. And as more and more folks get into 3D printing, they're constantly searching for new things to 3D print. And while initially, sites like Thingiverse.com and Printables.com have served as a place for people to find their files, more and more people are looking to create files of their own. This is great for the community, because often when you create a file of your own, you're creating something that's not only useful for yourself, but might solve somebody else's problem as well. As the knowledge and use of 3D printers has become easier, so has the use of modeling software. A lot of folks use programs like Fusion 360 from Autodesk or Tinkercad.com, as well as on the iPad, for those mobile users, Shaper 3D to create their own files. However, one thing that hasn't changed is the need for precise parts for different projects and different things you're making. So the tool that we're gonna talk about today are calipers, more specifically digital calipers like the ones we have here. And the digital caliper is used to measure the distance between two sides of an object, normally two opposite sides. Using these type of tools gives you precision that something like a ruler or maybe a tape measure won't give you. Using the digital version of these calipers also gives you more features, such as the ability to zero out or tear, and also the ability to convert to different units, let's say from millimeters to inches. And the easy to read digital screen is a big improvement over these older slide rule style or veneer style calipers. Let's first take a look at the different parts of the digital caliper. It might seem pretty straightforward, but there are some functions and features, even on this basic set here, that can be useful for different measurements of different parts of your model. First thing we're gonna look at are these two pieces here, which are called the external jaws. These help you measure the outside of something. And then likewise, opposite of those are the internal jaws, which can help you measure the inside, let's say the inside of a pipe, the inner diameter. On the bottom of the digital calipers, you can see as you start to extend it, you find something called the depth measuring blade. This can be very useful when you're trying to measure something that's down in a depth or something that's a little bit harder to get to. The display here shows you to a tenth of a millimeter the accuracy of the measurement that you're trying to take. The red button on this one is the power button to turn it on and off. Although you may find on most models, when you go to start moving it, it will automatically turn on. This yellow zero button helps you to calibrate it, so when you turn it on and you close the jaws completely, you press the zero button in order to make sure it's at zero before you take your measurement. This blue unit change button allows you to change between inches and millimeters. The visual scale that is shown on the length of the digital calipers is another great reference point so you can get a quick idea of about what the measurement will be. On some higher end models such as these, you'll also find a lock screw. The lock screw is useful if you wanna take a measurement and then lock it in so you can either go take the measurement somewhere else or compare it to another object. The thumb wheel is also a nicer feature on some of the higher end models that allow you to get a little bit more finer movement as you're coming up on the item that you're measuring. You hear that? It's bonus fact time. So the science of measurement is called metrology, not to be confused with meteorology, the science of forecasting the weather. All right, let's get back to these calipers. Beyond modeling, digital calipers can be useful in 3D printing to check the results of overall accuracy of your printer and filament. You can take a sample of the filament size to see if you're close to the 1.75 millimeter diameter that your printer requires. Likewise, you can print a 20 millimeter test cube and then check to make sure that your printer is printing accurately in the X, Y, and Z directions. For the example today, let's make a duplicate of this PVC pipe. We'll need to take some measurements to make sure that we create something accurate enough to fit. Let's first turn on the calipers and make sure that they are in millimeter units, as that's what's typically used for 3D modeling on this scale. I'll ensure that the caliper is zeroed out by hitting the zero button. This ensures that I'm starting from zero and accurately capturing the actual dimensions. We'll use the external calipers to get the outer diameter of the pipe and then use the internal jaws to get the inner diameter. 
For the length of the pipe, we could utilize the external jaws again, or we could use the depth measuring blade. It's important in doing all of this that we make sure the jaws are square or as tight as possible to the sides of the item that we're measuring. Once we have these dimensions, we can take them into a program as simple as Tinkercad, and by using the ruler function, we can get an accurate model of the pipe. Once we've done that, we can simply export the .stl file, slice it with Cura or your favorite slicer, and then send it to our 3D printer. All right, we hope you found this look at digital calipers helpful. We carry a few model of these in our Micro Center stores, so make sure next time you're in picking up your favorite inland filament, you pick up a pair of these as well and start your 3D modeling journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow Inland Filament and Micro Center on our other social media channels. Leave your comments below with any of your favorite 3D printing tools. We'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.